Good morning. This is about a one-year-old girl who presented to us with left thoracic congenital scoliosis with unsegmented bar and major rib anomalies as you can see. The upper ribs are deficient and there are multiple conjoint ribs on the lower part. She has been under care from one year age and till now we have had four to six monthly cast changes and total eight cast changes have been done till now. And these are very difficult children to treat because they come to you very early and this is the a uh, setup which we have in our OT in which we do the casting. This casting table has been customized by us and there are three horizontal straps, one which supports the foot, the other the pelvis and the third the head. And this is the system which we've been using. The initially we use spad traction for the lower limbs, both sides, and we also apply a halter traction on the neck. So usually about five pounds of like traction on each side and five pounds on the neck. And that's how it is supported without any hindrance on the posterior side of the torso. The stocking head is then applied from the lower torso upstairs, as you can see here. And this stocking head covers the entire torso. Over and above the stocking head, we would apply a soft roll. Now this stocking head has to be taken up to the chin and then very small pieces are cut out so that it accommodates the arms and these arms are one by one they are slipped over and this opening is created for the arms so that the arm straps along with the stock in it create a perfect base for the soft roll or the soft cotton roll to be applied so this is done on both sides and the stock in it is now ready to be applied just like a uh, inner dress. Now after that the uh, bandage rolls are placed so that over the abdomen so that the soft roll which is the cotton roll which goes over actually goes over the abdomen over the two bandage straps so that there is an inherent space over which the abdominal expansion can happen due to the respiratory efforts of the child. We always do this under general anesthesia. It's critical to adequate, to ensure adequate padding at shoulders to prevent impingement and sores. The multiple general anesthesia has to be done in these kids, and this is sometimes a problem later on. There has been publications on this, and the first step for putting in the plaster is casting the shoulder steps. There are two casts, each of two inches width, and then over the end of the neck arm region they are again compressed a little bit so that from two inches they come down to about one and a half inches which is just about adequate for the small child and these shoulder straps needs to be adjusted carefully so that there is no impingement later on once they get hardened it's very difficult to cut them because it is very close to the face of the child so after that the four inches plaster of paris casting is, is rolled over and they are then accommodated into the shoulder straps so that they get reinforced. So this is the process in which it is being done. And as we'll be seeing shortly, that it is always a continuous massage over the cast so that there are no undulations or there are minimal undulations. So reinforcing the shoulder straps and amalgamation to the trunk cast goes on. And once this is done, the rest of the cast is developed over the lower part of the thorax and the abdomen. So this is what has been completed for the upper part of the cast and the amalgamation is nearly completed. Then additional layers of casting is done in the lower part of the thorax and the abdomen to improve cast strength and durability. This is usually done by six inches POP casing and the others were done through a four inches. And as I told you that we must make sure that there are no undulations even on the posterior aspect of the cast because once it gets hard, it is difficult to remove these undulations. Now the next step, we wait till the cast is reasonably hard so that we change gloves and then the molding starts. 
This molding is very critical. It's actually about 60 to 90 seconds in which the cast is getting finally hardened. And this is uh, the step which we do the derotation maneuver. This is a left sided hump because there is a left sided convexity and the torso is rotated on the opposite side as you can see. This is how multiple derotation maneuvers are done in over that 90 seconds in which the cast is getting hardened and this molding is critically important and the gentle pressure and smooth derotation force ensures there is no indentation on the cast surface and the holding the cast in the corrected position is then done till it completely sets in. There is a little bit of pressure on the hump and there is an opposite, diagonally opposite correction on the torso so that ultimately once it sets in, you are then sure that the derotation maneuvers have been done adequately. Then we roll the stockinette back to give additional security at the edges of the cast and these edges are now not impinging and the uh, care has to be taken so that complete flexion of the hips is possible and the neck part is then folded upon itself and a micropore tape is attached as an adhesive tape so that it doesn't fall back. And once this step is completed, we are now in a position to put in the final layers of articast to improve longevity of the cast by augmenting it with the synthetic plaster. And you can still see that the uh, two bandages are in position underneath the abdominal part of the cast. So once they are removed, there is adequate space for the expansion of the thorax and the abdomen in the respiratory efforts of the child. So augmentation is done by two, four inches or three inches articast, depending upon the size or size of the child, and then your casting is completed. The next step is to cut out a window so that there is an adequate space for the expansion of the thorax and the abdomen, and this is a large enough window. Be very generous in marking out the window, because this is not at all important for stability of the cast and for correction maneuvers of the scoliosis. And this part is taken out by electric cutter and this window is very important for adequate long-term longevity of the cast. So this is the final appearance and that's how the child is after the casting is done and she's ready to go home now within the next few hours of the casting. Till four years of age, we've been able to keep the curve under control and this functional activities of the child is completely maintained.